What is going on guys, boy? Coming to you once again with some 3D anatomy action, uh, courtesy of anatomylearning.com. Um, please support them by visiting their site, linked in the description box below. And now we're going to go into the posterior muscles of the lower leg, the posterior muscles of the lower leg. And uh, we're going to go a little bit from what they generally have in common to the more specific nuances between them. There are two groups of muscles here. There are the superficial and there are the deep muscle groups. There are seven muscles in total. Three of them belong to the superficial group and four belong to the deep group. So let's start with the superficial muscles, the big muscles. They are called the gastrocnemius or the gastroc the psoas and the plantaris. It's really hard to see the plantaris, but it's, oh no. There you go. It's this muscle right here, the plantaris. So all of these muscles, superficial and deep, are innervated by the tibial nerve. The tibial nerve, and it'll make more sense when we get into the nervous system in general where we're going to see that the sciatic nerve comes down the back of the femur and sort of branches off into the tibial and fibular aspects the fibular nerve is going to wrap around this way and towards the fibula and innervate the lateral and interior aspects whereas the tibial nerve were sort of more so go straight down innervating all of these posterior muscles back here now, insofar as function, the common function that all of these muscles sort of have, both superficial and deep, are plantar flexion of the foot. Plantar flexion, that is pointing the toe, pointing it like a ballet dancer. The only exception to the plantar flexion motif would be the popliteus. Now, the popliteus actually doesn't cross the ankle joint. And it doesn't touch the foot. It actually only crosses the knee joint. So you're going to see its action there on flexion of the knee. It's not going to have that plantar flexion that the rest of the posterior, both superficial and deep muscles, are going to have. Now when it comes to the superficial muscles of the posterior lower leg, we're going to see that the gastrocnemius, which is huge, the gastrocnemius, very powerful muscle, and the plantaris, can it's it's right behind it. The plantaris are the ones, are the two out of the three that crosses the knee joint. So we're going to see some knee action going on there, knee joint action. However, the soleus originates at the tibia. The origin is at the tibia, and then it crosses over the ankle joint. So because there's no crossing of the knee joint and no origin at the femur, the psoas muscle is going to be the odd man out that does not have any action on the knee joint. But as for the plantaris and gastrocnemius, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to guess what sort of action there's going to be. Since it's on the back instead of the front, you can sort of imagine this pulling and causing flexion of the knee. So the gastrocnemius and the plantaris have knee flexion properties as well as plantar flexion properties because of the joints they cross. Whereas the soleus only has plantar flexion properties. It doesn't cross the knee joint so it does not have any knee flexion properties. So for the deep muscles of the posterior thigh, you're gonna see a lot of counterparts towards the anterior muscles. So let's take a minute and try to remember what the anterior tibialis does, the anterior tibialis. Well, remember, we remember that since it's at the front, it's a dorsiflexor of the foot. So when we look at the tibialis posterior, you know, it runs towards the bottom, the back, so we know that it is a plantar flexor. Now, the anterior tibialis also had a secondary function besides dorsiflexion. We remember that because it came down through the side of the foot and attached on the side of the foot, it was also, also responsible for some inversion, turning the bottom of the foot 
towards the screen this way and reminding ourselves that this is the medial view and that was all because it came from an attached at this medial side of the foot well we actually look at the um, tibialis uh, posterior right here and we see that kind of does the same thing um, attaching on this sort of side of the foot so even though it's a it performs opposite in regards to dorsi and plantar flexion it is an antagonist of the tibialis anterior it is actually a synergist in regards to inversion of the foot the tibialis posterior still inverts the foot just like the tibialis anterior because it attaches towards the side but because it comes from the back when it comes to dorsiflexing and plantar flexing the foot it does the opposite of what the tibialis anterior does you see the same type of reasoning apply a little bit towards the um flexor digitorum longus a flexor digitorum longus where it's kind of a little bit attached to the side of this foot so it's also responsible for some inversion and that would be opposed to the flexor hallucis longus which kind of wraps around the bottom of the foot bottom of the foot so it doesn't really have that inversion sort of function although the flexor whoo can't can't click on it the flexor digitorum longus does have some inverse inversion properties and that's again a result of where it attaches or inserts now one very important aspect is to note the insertion point of both the gastrocnemius plantaris and the psoas. The psoas ah the psoas where's the psoas yeah the psoas is actually the same tendon and that tendon is very famous. It is the calcaneal tendon, also known informally as the Achilles tendon. And it's this tendon and its con insertion point at the calcaneus. It's that tendon that gives you most of your flexive power because it's your, especially the gastrocnemius, that gives you a significant amount of plantar flexion so the final muscle that we're going to look at here is the odd man out the popliteus muscle popliteus muscle and remember it shares a name with this sort of area right here the popliteal surface very similar to the popliteal surface in terms of location. And since this only crosses the knee joint, it's not going to have any bearing on the movement of the foot, but it will have some bearing on the movement of the knee, the knee joint. So since it's in the back, you can sort of predict that, yes, it's going to flex the leg. But if you look at the orientation right here and how it crosses, you can sort of imagine that if you contract this muscle, it's going to turn, it's going to pull on this um, side, since it's almost going, you know, uh, lateral to medial, it's going to pull on this medial side and sort of rotate the tibia medially so there's some medial rotation action going on by this popliteus muscle as well so in terms of the deep posterior muscles it really is the odd man out it's the only one that has any bearing whatsoever on the knee joint and it is also the only one that has no bearing whatsoever on the ankle or foot so that's very interesting speaking of the foot our next video is going to be our final video on the muscles of the lower limb and we're going to look at the foot muscles the foot muscles so i hope you're looking forward to that i certainly am i will see you in that video click on it click on it watch it now watch it now all right guys i'll see you later take care bye bye